Look out through the window pane Just beyond this house of plenty Lies a field of golden grain And it's white, white in the harvest But the reapers, where are they? They're in the house Oh, can't the children hear the father sad? Jesus 
Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. In temptation. I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. Yes, I know Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. The soul of man is like a ship. That sails on the sea of time. The storms may come, the winds may blow, and rock this ship of mine. But the reason my ship will never sink, and today it's still afloat. My compass is His precious word, and Jesus pilots my boat. I will sail the stormy seas no more unless Jesus leads the way. I won't ever drift so far from the shore I can't hear what he has to say. I belong to a fleet that sails today on a glorious one-way trip. We'll land safely on shore to sail no more for Jesus. Jesus pilots my ship. My soul pulled in to safety's port. My stern was torn apart. And the bow of my vessel was so badly crushed. Sin's waters flooded my heart. I had sailed so long on life's angry waves with my cargo of fear and despair. Then I called on his name and he lifted the blame. Now he pilots my ship everywhere. I will sail the stormy seas no more, lest Jesus leads the way. I won't ever drift so far from the shore. I can't hear what he has to say. For I belong to a fleet that sails today on a glorious one-way trip. We'll land safely on shore to sail no more, for Jesus pilots my ship. I belong to a fleet that sails today on a glorious... Good evening. It's good to see everyone. Let's all stand. We're going to sing When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. We'll sing the first and the last. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather on the other shore And the roll is caught up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is caught up yonder When the roll is caught up yonder When the roll is called up yonder Called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. 
Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Love life is over and our work on earth is done. And the roll is caught up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is caught up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for bringing us here safely. I pray for those that are still on their way that they would get here safe. Anyone listening or comes in tonight that's not saved, you would please save them. Please fill past with the Holy Spirit as he preaches and open our hearts and minds to your word that we would hear what you have for us. I do pray all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 6 in your Bibles. Genesis chapter 6. That's the first book in the Bible for you theologians. Genesis chapter 6, and uh, we'll begin reading in, in verse 1, Genesis chapter 6 and verse 1, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. Also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air." For it repenteth men that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold... It was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Back in chapter 5, the Bible says in verse 28, Lamech, and Lamech lived 182 years. And begat a son, and he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah five hundred and ninety and five years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred and seventy and seven years, and he died. And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Our Heavenly Father, we, we, are, uh, we are in tremendous need for you to speak to our hearts tonight. And Holy Spirit, we cannot begin to grasp the word without your help. And the Lord said you would teach us all things and bring us into all truth and so we need you to do that tonight and we confess our sin and and Lord cleanse us and use us may we treat this like a time of self-examination a, a time of changing direction a time of life changing uh, decisions and Lord not just like any other day and we thank you for everybody's here, the faithfulness. We pray that you bless all those that are here tonight. 
Lord, we need you to work, and we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. The Old Testament is misrepresented, misinterpreted, and twisted, and preached out of context millions of times. One such is the beginning of this chapter. And we see the sons of God and the daughters of men. They said that the angels came down and, and, and uh, uh, re- reproduced people uh, with, with, with uh, humans. Um, first, angels do not, have not, and still do not reproduce. Uh, and second, if there, if there would, there would be angels flying around today. You know, and, 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 and it says they produced giants, and that was a result of this coming together, but, but the flood wiped out those giants in the next chapter or so. And, uh, if you, and, and we had giants after, after that. You can ask Joshua and Caleb and David. They, they saw some giants. And so man was advancing here. If you read in this chapter, man was advancing. They were... They were, they were, things were going, they were, they were, produ- they were advancing in, 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 in technology and they were, they were becoming mighty men and they were learning to be great warriors. But, but, but uh, something was wrong. In verse 5 it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. You know, I, I, I don't think we as Christians should slough off or think that God ever turns his side and doesn't see the wickedness. He sees all wickedness. And, 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 and by the way, God demanded separation and has always demanded separation. He says, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. God wants his children to be clean. God wants his children to be clean. And, and, and I want you to notice it says there, God saw the evil. And there was three responses. He was sorry. He was grieved, and then he decided to destroy man. That's not good. And so we see here that, 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 that he decided to destroy man. We go back to chapter, uh, chapter 5, and we see that Noah's daddy and mama were in the same mess, and they had this boy, and hoped that God would send them rest. Noah means rest. I think of that verse, come unto me all ye that labor and I will give you rest. Aren't you glad there was a day that Jesus Christ came to this earth and he, and he walked here among us and he died on the cross and, and, and he was buried and he rose again the third day as our deliverer. Noah, Noah was a type of Christ and a type of deliverer. Jesus is the ultimate deliverer. Amen. And so I want us to look at some lessons from this portion of scripture, some practical lessons tonight. This this is a this is a a, 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 a a tragic portion of scripture. It's a it's a dark portion of scripture. It's a it's a wicked portion of scripture uh, here, and, and we need to understand that, that 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 God wants us to learn from this. We live in a day when wickedness is is, is, is there's more wickedness than not in this world. And, and, and we live in a day when the things that are good, people call wicked. Or crazy. We live in a day and age when, when evil, is, evil is, is covered up with money and power and prestige. And, and, and uh, make no mistake, God sees it. But I, I want to say three things to you tonight. I want to give, give you three things to think about. And then we'll have Brother Tim come and give us some prayer requests. I want you to notice, first of all, God is never pleased with wickedness. Amen. God's never pleased with wickedness. Now, we, uh, we had Christmas time. And uh, years ago, when it, we all lived around here, my brother and my two sisters and and or we would come home, we would meet at the house in Clinton and open gifts. So Miss Creed and I decided one day, you know, we would we were gonna you know, we'd always get gifts for my brother and my sister and my mom and dad. So uh 
we went and got we got gifts for him, but then we got another set of gifts that we put under the tree, and we got gifts from the Goodwill. We got all the ladies these gaudy, ugly necklaces, and got the guys these old ties, all kinds of picks in them, didn't match anything, you know. And uh, we put, I mean, they were gift wrapped. I mean, they, you could see, you could see the excitement when they were opening, opening their, their gifts, but when they got to it, they looked at it, and it was precious, because we were dying laughing, and then we handed them their, their gifts, but you can, you can, you can pack it up any way you want, wrap it up any way you want. Sin is still wicked. Wickedness is still wicked. And God sees through, God sees through the trappings and, and sees through the, 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 the bows and all the trimmings. It's still wicked. And God is never pleased with wickedness. He saw the wickedness. God is not blind. He is everywhere present. There is not a wicked thought, a wicked deed that has gone unseen by Almighty God. And Almighty God saw that the, saw the nucleus of the sin. Look at the portion of Scripture, folks. Look at look look at this, and and let this sink in. It, it, it says it says and the, every imagination and thoughts of his heart was only what evil continually. Their, the the nucleus of wickedness was their hearts were wicked. Their hearts were wicked, and he saw that he saw. That the that, that that the epicenter, that the, that the that the that the the supply of this wickedness came from their heart. Now, folks, you can't do anything with a wicked heart apart from God. Notice it repented the Lord. He 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 changed his mind. He just he he, he he's going to wipe everybody out and start over again. That's just God. And then he was grieved. You see where it says there? He was grieved. It grieved him, verse 6, at his heart. It grieved him at his heart. Now listen, listen, there's, 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 no, there's no debate but there, people often think, you know, God just does this and God does this. Man has always had a choice. You choose what you do, when you, when you do, how you do. You choose to follow God or you choose not to. But God is never, ever, ever pleased with wickedness. You, you know, these, it, it says these, 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 he says in verse 2, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Now I'm going to tell you something. You can marry, you can look for the, 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 the fair, what the world says is fair, fellas. But let me just tell you something. The heart better be fair. Amen. You, your, love, your love for a woman or your love for a man should never challenge your love for God. The sons of God. This was talking about fellows that were following the Lord and they saw women that were not. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. You see, there's not a lot there's not a lot of wickedness mentioned. No there's no list in here. It's the problem with their relationships. Folks, folks, listen, listen. Being unequally yoked is as, is as early as this verse. These verses in chapter 6. Listen, a man, a man seeking to, to marry a woman, even dating a woman, she should, be, she should know the Lord. Amen. That's right, brother. And she should be in church. Right. You say, preacher... Preacher, I, I come to church and I don't see that many women in church. Well, go out and win them to the Lord and get them in church. Then court them, amen? <laughs> Build a church and court a girl, amen? Uh, I mean, let's, let's get with it, amen? That'll work, won't it? Amen, Anita? Amen. 
need us thinking, wow, how does that work? But, uh, but, 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 but listen, listen, I'm going to tell you something. I've seen, I've seen people, let me tell you something. They, the, God is the last one they check with before, before they court. I had, I had a call from uh, Miranda and her husband today. They said, Pastor, how you doing? We, we miss you. We, 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 I said, when are you coming back? Well, soon. I said, good, you need to get in church and serve the Lord. They said, that's right. Listen, 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 folks. Listen, listen, God is never pleased with wickedness. God is never pleased with wickedness. And, and, and uh, again, I want you to see this. God has and will judge sin. Now, what's taking place in here? It says it's only evil... Only evil continually. He judged sin in the garden. He judged sin in the in the with the with the flood in a few chapters, and he will judge sin at the great white throne judgment. Notice, notice what it says in uh, Revelation twenty. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, who's, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead which were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell were delivered up from the uh, uh, up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast in the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire you say preacher what's it talking about there sin well let me tell you something every work of a lost person is sin And God has judged sin. And, and, and make no mistake, and I, I, I want to tell you something. Sometimes we get impatient. We get impatient as Christians because we look around. We look at our leaders and we look at what's going on. And we say, well, when's God going to judge that? You read in Revelation. You read in Revelation. You, you read, read, read in Revelation when, 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 when those that have gone to heaven, they say, hey, when are you going to avenge this? Let me just say, God has a plan. And let me tell you something, judgment is a big part of God's plan. There, the, the, the great white throne judgment, let, I want you to get a picture of this. It doesn't matter who. Or how powerful they were, or how rich they were, or how popular they were. Or how far they could, how they could throw a football, or how strong they were, or how educated they were. God is going. They're going to stand before Jesus Christ, who was crucified, and they're going to have to answer according to their works. And let me tell you something: when they are answering according to their works, they're in trouble, because the Bible says, "Not by works of righteousness which ye have done." We had a little precious girl in Duval High School over here shot and killed. They said they had, I don't know if they found who did it. God knows. God knows. God knows. There's no surprises with God. And God's going to judge sin. God's going to judge every sin. And so God is never pleased with wickedness, we see here. And God has, ha, has and will judge sin. But let me, just say, let me just say something I want to encourage you. And, and this is probably the most important part of the message. God's supply of grace is never depleted. Isn't that good? God's supply of grace is never depleted. Now, I'm not trying to be off color or anything, but, you know, it, it, it really threw me for a loop during COVID that the thing we couldn't find on store shelves was toilet paper. Yes. Either somebody has a sense of humor or it was just 
people were buying a lot of toilet paper. And you could only buy so many packs. I mean, we were buying it by the rolls. Remember that? You guys are laughing, shaking your heads. I mean, I mean, uh, some supermarkets, the things run out. Do you know I, I go, into, go into the supermarket and I can't find, for Miss Creed, for her ice cream, I can't find wet walnuts? It's a tragedy. It's run out. Huh? You ever go, you ever go, you ever craving an ice cream at a certain place and you go there and they're out? Or our ice cream machine is not working. I mean, you say, what are you doing? There's never a sign from heaven that says we're all out of grace. God's grace. And God looked down, he, was, he looked down, and guess what he saw? He saw a man that was righteous and the bible it, 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 it notice about notice what it says about about noah did you see what we read did you folks did you were you listening did you see what we said huh noah found grace in the eyes of the lord look at verse 9 noah was a just man and perfect in his generations and noah what walked with God. In the middle of all this wickedness, Noah walked with God. Amen. And he walked with God by God's grace. But notice what it says. Here, here the Lord is he's looking and he's and he, and, it, and and he's grieved and he's disappointed and he and he and he's and he's and he's, and, and he's looking at all this sin and wickedness and he looks and there's Noah. And the Bible said, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't find grace in works. He didn't find grace in, his, in, 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 his, in, in what he could do. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Notice, notice it says, and he walked with God, you see, the eyes of God. The, he, saw, he, he found grace in the eye of the Lord because he Noah saw his heart. We see our we see everybody's out, outward performance. We hear what everybody says. We see everybody dressed up in their Sunday go to meet and best. We see hear everybody with their cliches. We hear all these things, but God looks right into the heart. And he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I, you know, I want to find grace in the eyes of the Lord. I want, that's where I want to find grace. I want that grace. I need that grace day, daily. And God spoke to Noah. He, he didn't speak to anybody else. He spoke to Noah. He said, I'm going I'm to destroy the world. In following chapters, he says, you know, you're going to build an ark. Noah probably said, what in the world is an ark? But God gives him the plans. Tells him how to build it. He does it exactly the way God said he was to do. Told him how to take the animals on. He took his family in the ark. And God saved his family. Everybody else perished. Huh? Don't you want God to speak to you? By his grace? God reached down and spoke to Noah and gave him direction. Notice, notice Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 7. It says, By faith Noah being warned of God... Th of things not as yet uh, seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness 
which is by faith. Noah found grace. Jacob found grace. Esau found grace. Abraham found grace. Lot found grace. Isaac found grace. Joseph found grace. Moses found grace. Ruth found grace. David, Solomon, the apostles, Paul, and many more found it. And if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you were saved by faith. Grace. The Bible says this in Acts chapter 20, verse 24, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself. Now listen to this. So that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I received, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this last phrase. To testify the gospel of grace, the, gra the, the gospel of the grace of God. Paul called it the gospel of the grace of God. He said Jesus Christ died on the cross. He is buried. He rose again. And it's the grace of God. I like, to, I like to look at those verses that talk about grace. Huh? Grace. Greater than all our sin. I want you to notice God is never pleased with wickedness. God has and will judge sin. And God's supply of grace has not run out. God's grace is still there. I want to tell you, I need it every day. I need it every day. I need His grace every day. I need it every hour. What can God, what can we, how can we apply this? Let me, let, me, let me give you three things to think about, and I'm done. We live in a wicked, sinful world, and we are sinners. By God's grace, let's stay clean. Let's stay clean. Again, we still can live for God. And He sees it. God sees your heart. And we can live for God in this world. And then, I want to say to you, we must operate on God's grace and by God's grace. Stop and rewind to the day that you were saved and consider the direction or where you would be had you not met the grace of God that day. And where would we be? What will we be doing? God looked down and, and, and he saw that they were only evil continually. And I guarantee you God is looking down and he's seen an only evil continually world. There weren't that many people on the world that time. We've multiplied it. There's billions of people on this earth. And we're all sinners. And folks, there's, a, there's sin going on and on and on and on and on. But not enough sin to negate. Not enough sin that God's grace can't take care of it. Amen. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You're not going to find grace in your co-workers. Sometimes you'll not find grace in your family. You'll not find grace in this world. But you'll find grace with God. 
How am I going to make it through this trial? By God's grace. How am I going to make it through this tragedy? By God's grace. How am I going to make the bills up this month? By God's grace. How am I going to get this done? Right? By God's grace. You, you, you guys, you all raising those kids. You got one coming in. You got those kids back there. By the way, I commend you families for bringing your kids to church and being faithful to church. God will reward you for that. He will. A lot of people don't think that's a big deal. It's a big deal. Amen. It's a big, big deal. But you're raising your kids in a day and age when it's going crazy. And you remember, remember, if you don't remember anything else in the scripture, train up. Don't train them down. Train up. If you have to keep them home and educate them yourself, train them up. If you can't find a place to send them with good godly teachers that's going to teach them, train them up and teach them. Teach them the word of God and, and love them. But, but let me just tell you something. By God's grace, they can be something for God. By God's grace, we can still have young people turn out for God. Amen? Let's bow for prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. Pray that you bless what we've heard. May we realize the grace that you have provided for all of us. Lord, help us not to forget it. Lord, remind us every other thought. And Lord, we just pray that you just change us to be like you. We thank you for the example of Noah. We thank you for your word and what you say, how we can glean from it. And Lord, help us to do business with you tonight in Jesus' name. Let's stand with heads bowed and eyes closed. God spoke to you tonight. I want to encourage you to get along with him. Maybe you just need to get along with God and say, Lord, I need the grace, your grace to get through this thing I'm going through. I need to get through this. I need the grace to make the right decision here. Thank you. Be seated. Come on, Brother Tim. Nice shirt. Good evening, everybody. Let's uh, continue to pray for our bereaved families, uh, particularly uh, the family of Dr. Bill Blount, Blount, Blount that went to be with the Lord. Uh, pray for their uh, God's uh, comfort, strength on that family. And pray for the Hatcher family and the passing of Brother Arnold's sister. Uh, be lifting up uh, the Hatchers um, for God to strengthen and comfort them. Continue to pray for our individual requests our, uh, and our unspoken requests for folks in the church. Pray for Sister Honora, Sister Anita, Sister Bella, Sister Bethany, Sister Kathy's granddaughter Kaylee, Sister Sharita, Brother Cornelius, uh, Brother Miss Mortley. Sister Denise, Brother Miss Keys, um, Brother Frank, Sister Jennifer, Brother Miss Dearson, Sister Mona, Sister Ori, Pastor, and Sister Sarika. So be lifting them up uh, for God to answer their unspoken prayer. Pray for uh, uh, Sister Jennifer's um, sister to get her visa to be able to come to the wedding, uh, uh, Sarah's wedding. Uh, has any word on that? Has anything still wait? Hurry up and wait. Yeah, you're dealing with the government. Amen. We'll just just keep praying for that. Pray for uh, uh, Sister Nita's uh, mom's or uh, sister's friend Kathy. Um, how's she doing? Okay. Well, I'll continue to pray that God would heal her. She's she's been a real blessing and a help to to uh, Sister Nita's sister. Brother Brother Bales is right under that. I'm looking. Yes. I talked to him today, and 
and they're getting ready to travel. So Lord's, Lord's blessed. They're, they're going much better. Amen. Amen. Continue to pray for them. And pray for uh, Sister Faye's health. It was good to see her here uh, Sunday. Uh, I think she's feeling better. She uh, She's back back in the kitchen. Amen. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it was good, wasn't it? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just continue to pray for her. Lift her up in prayer. Pray for uh, uh, Miss Sharita's daughter, Mary, and how's she doing? Oh, okay. Well, con- continue to, amen, continue to pray for her. And pray for uh, Brother Chris's mom, Leslie, as she continues to recover from uh, her uh, ap- appendectomy. And uh, pray for them uh, to get things going on the house. Chris, is there any word on that? Okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, keep lifting them up. Pray for Sister uh, Hazel. Pray for her health and pray as she struggles with loss of her sister. And pray for Sister Mona as she uh, helps her mom. That God would give her wisdom and to protect her mom when she's at work. Pray for uh, Brother Keys. Brother Miss Keys. It was good to see them here Sunday. You continue to pray for Brother Keys as he heals. And uh, pray for his wife. And pray that they both, uh, their legs are strengthened and they can walk. Well, pray for um, Brother Mark Trayan. Uh, he has uh, lots of health problems, but he's not on dialysis yet. So be praying, praying for him, and pray for uh, <laughs> pray for his mom. <laughs> pray for God's strength and wisdom on her. Pray for uh, a, pray for the uh, uh, the friends of Brother Darian that have been here on Sunday morning. It's good to see you here tonight, brother. It just uh, you know what I, you guys come in here on Sunday morning and it's it's a it's a real blessing to see you. and I know you walk out the door and the devil's going to do everything he can to kind of ruin your walk with God. I know it's it, it's hard out there, but it's good to see. You. I appreciate your faith, Lord. Amen. So continue to lift him up in prayer. Pray for. Um, let's see here. Pray for Sister Sheila that she's back. She's back in the Philippines. So uh, be lifting her up in prayer. It's uh, it was it's good to see her when she's able to get down here. So be lifting her up. Pray for our um, uh, mission commitments. Uh, the missionaries project we support our nations, nations leaders, uh, the ones that are saved and the ones that aren't. The ones that are saved, pray for them to live for God and make good decisions. And the ones that aren't, pray that they get saved. Uh, pray for our church, church family. Pray for each other. Pray for our bus ministry, our Master Club Kids and Teens, our Sunday school that's coming up in October, and pray for our folks that are recently saved, and our discipleship program, and our missions month, uh, September uh, 24th, next Sunday, or I'm sorry, 17th, uh, we've got uh, Carlos Mora coming here, and uh, Pastor, you were saying that he does he need tools? Is there something Brother we can do? Brother Carlos, okay, so everybody knows. I'm talking about Visa, I'm the last to know, and I was sent an email. I never got it, and they cannot get into the country. So, Brother Carlos, mm-hmm. it's going to be it's going to be delayed for him to get here. What's that? What's that? Yeah, I told him to walk across the border. I was going to say they haven't built the wall yet, but. Um, uh, we're working to try to get a missionary to, to pinch hit, come in. We're working. If not, we'll still do missions on Sunday. We'll do something. We'll do something. And uh, I, I've talked, I'm talking to several missionaries, get them to zoom in and talk to us from the foreign field. And and, uh, and uh, but we're going to have a good time on yeah. Sunday. We're still going to eat. We're still going to have food. Oh, so yeah, that's man. the main thing. <laughs> Amen. But pray, pray for Carlos. Carlos was, you know, my dad knew, my brother knew, everybody knew but me. And I'm sitting there, and I and, 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 and I call Steve, and I said, hey, how you doing? I said, we're excited about having Carlos. And he goes, uh, well, they can't get into the country. I said, well, you know, I didn't know that. So, uh, anyhow, yeah, it's kind of, kind of fun, you know. And uh, But, yeah, I've called everybody. You know, I, I thought about having some Mormon missionaries, but anyhow. We, wow. But anyhow. 
Well, amen. We have had Mormon missionaries, right? Yeah, they, they were visitors. Yeah, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm just kidding. But anyhow, I want everybody to know that, know that. But but still comfort. We'll have a, we'll have a good time on Sunday. Amen. Pray for our next outreach, evangelistic outreach, on Sunday, October 1st, 4:30 p.m. So, by the way, do, do we need to knock that back with it getting dark early? Not yet. I don't think. Okay. Doesn't change yet, does it? No, but it's it's starting to, anyway. 4:30 p.m. Is it getting dark early? Yeah, it seems like it is, but it's dark I'll out there now. I go on. <laughs> yeah. Pray for our uh, preachers camp, January 8th through the 12th. Uh, yeah, I wanted next to say year. something about that. Uh, praise the Lord. We got we got a young man that went to school with, with Patrick. Uh, his name is Ryan, and uh, his his little daughter has scoliosis. I got to get her name. Mm, but um, wow. it's not a it's not a it's not bad. He said it's not that bad, but she's dealing with it. But um, anyhow, he's helping us with the website and everything. He he had a company uh, with 20 employees. They did apps for these big countries companies, you know, apps for them. Mm. And uh, he sold the company, and he's not doing that anymore. So, but he's excited about the preachers camp. Amen. And so he's helping us with the website. And uh, he's, he's going to help do some things with that. And so I just praise the Lord for his help because we need it, you know. Amen. And, uh, and um, he went to school with Patrick, and he's still going to help us. So. Amen. <laughs> he lives, Ryan lives in uh, Mattatoon, Michigan, I believe, either that or Illinois. But it's a little town. But uh, he's enjoying preaching. But he's a blessing. Amen. Amen. We'll be praying for that preacher's camp. Pray for the 14 preachers that are going to be teaching there and pray for all the men that are attending and for God to call the men. How many sign-ups do you have so far? A couple. Hey, wait a minute. Just, yeah, they'll we, come in. We, we're, we're really... It's a little early yet. Yeah, it's early and we've got to market it a yeah. little bit better and get some, get some preachers signed up. Amen. School, this is the school start. Everybody's starting school. So September is kind of getting into the thing. So yeah, it's we're, we're busy be, month. And so that's one reason why he's... He and Brother Mark Monty and some other guys will help us with it. So. Amen. Pray for the uh, our sister churches around the country and the world, lost loved ones, pastors, churches without pastors, uh, for God to call preachers, and for our first responders, our military, nurses, doctors, and for all of our nation's kids, especially those in the public schools. Pray for that family of that young girl that was that was shot over at Duval. Uh, yeah. That's tragic. That's pretty close to home. Pray for the Nigerian political situation and, and Tabernacle Baptist Church in Greenville, South Carolina, to find a pastor. And with that, are, are there any updates or additional prayer requests? Going once. <laughs> no? Nobody has anything? Okay, I guess everybody wants to get out of here. Go ahead, do what you like to stand and pray for us, brother. Thank you. receive the offering. Let's give us Lord direct. Come on, brother. Father, bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, middle of the week. 
We're going to make it through. Amen? Everybody doing okay? Amen. Amen. Don't forget, don't forget, uh, continue praying for missions commitment. Let's pray for each other. Brother, brother, I forgot to mention Brother Kearney, but Brother Kearney, um, he handled the situation. He handled the situation, and uh, it's still the, the 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 ripples of the situation have not been super good. Um, it is also a good teaching moment for for me to Brother Kearney on some things that that he needs to be aware of going forward, and so pray for that. They're still having people steal from the new site, steal supplies on a regular basis. And so uh, just, just, just pray that God, God works in, in a way that, that, uh, that he can, he can uh, get that building up and, and, and keep, keep things, keep people from stealing them blind. All right? Well, hope to see you Sunday. Amen. Let's stand to be dismissed. Thank the Lord for the evening. Brother Chris, reach out. Reach out there and close in prayer for us.